start that again. Okay, so it's a Saturday afternoon. Um, Hannah and Elizabeth went uh, to Dog Agility this morning. Uh, and I came out here to see horse and wreck the boat. Um, I'll show you what I've done. Basically, I've got all the electricity open, unraveled. I've got the ceiling down um, to the power. That probably doesn't look a lot different, but sorting out the cabling on the back side of the instruments. Um, and it's all with a view to, um, well, among other things, I've got to sort out the uh, plug on the aerial, because the plug on the aerial doesn't work very well. But I want to fit or install this. It's a wireless box, <coughs> so that I can put, uh, so we can get wireless access to the chart plotter that's in the, um, in the cockpit. Um, didn't come with them first books. Comes with an instruction book. That's the box we've got to fit. Um, looks like that. And then we get some cabling, power cabling. Those clips I've put on the put in the box so I don't lose them. That links to the chart plotter, although that cable's already on the boat because the guy who had it before us had one of these fitted. Um, so really, I think I've just got to put power to it and plug it in and find somewhere to screw that. Uh, and I'm thinking it's going to go up on that bulkhead where the back of the instruments already are. So, uh, so let's get started. Um, I think probably what's going to happen is I'm not going to bother filming me doing it because I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it up as I go along. But I'll show you what I've done when I've finished. Okay. So it's not pretty engineering. It'll probably look a bit better on the camera than it really does in real life but uh, anyway I've screwed it onto the uh, uh, what do you call this bulkhead I don't know right next to the companion way that if it comes out black box down there is the back of the chart plotter so that's what I'm trying to connect to anyway so so we've then got grey cable which is kind of like the signal cable that plugs into the chart plotter um, it's routed around there and the extra cable is just kind of hidden underneath this uh, ceiling panel which is very much on the to-do list because there's no very few screws left holding it up. Um, old boat where the ceiling's been off a few times. Um, job for the winter, I think. Um, then power lead, which is another ready-made lead, plugs into here, runs down there. Um, it's only like three foot long, which is a bit rubbish, really. Um, so I've had to extend it. So I've got an, ext an extension using just um, one of those little square connector blocks you to tighten the screws up again not pretty engineering but pretty yeah pretty robust so from underneath there there's a connect an extension lead that runs around the back of that old fuse box and where the AIS is into the panel here and I've picked up on what was the I'm guessing the power supply that was for it because um, there was just an empty connector so uh, um, and now when I um, switch instruments on Yeah, I get, does it come out? A power light. And if I switch the chart plotter on, the number one lights up next to the network. So I think I've got it connected. What I've got to do now is be able to talk to it. And that comes to part two of the, the uh, spending money. Hold on a second, I'll get it out of the box. So part two of our spending all our money is this which is potentially fantastic or a huge waste of money but it, what it is does my phone get far enough back it's a cheap Chinese um, Android tablet that has got a keyboard comes with it as well connects on it's on the like a magnetic lock if I lift it off like that um, and they get further back. I'm recording this on my phone, so um, there you go. So it's just a tablet, but what made it good 
it's got all it's a Samsung screen Intel processor all the right things on it and it comes uh, dual boot so I can load it as an Android um, tablet um, you know normal sort of uh, touch screen type thing or with Windows 10 so I can then use software in that on it so depending on what apps and whatever programs I might want to run I can pretty much cover all bases with this one thing it's also big enough um, to act as like a TV or you know for easy to watch films on when we have a an evening at anchor we can sit and watch something on it um, it should do everything and it was 200 pounds as opposed to five or six hundred pounds for an equivalent size because that's a 12 inch screen as well um, it's quite big um, and it weighs quite a bit it's a metal case so it's, it's a nicely made thing I've, I've only switched it on so far and installed an app um, but otherwise so far it's been really good so I'm going to switch this off again and I'm going to try and get it talking to my new Wi-Fi network and I'll come back to you in a minute <coughs> okay it's proven to be more painful than it should be um, okay the first thing you need to do is connect you download the app which I've done you then have to connect your uh, wireless device obviously to your new wireless network and it says you have to enter the network key and the network key so the, well so the first thing you then have to do is un dis un take the thing off the wall that you just screwed on the wall because the, the network key is kind of buried just in there I don't know if you can see that or not which when it's screwed up there oh, sorry when it's screwed up there you can't read so that's not very good so then anyway so then you connect up to the network you enter your password and sure enough it connects and you think right I'm getting there and you click you click on the bit of software switch it on again you do it again so I've got the new you download the BNG app and the first thing that says is that we're not using that anymore you have to click on go free so you go to the go free app like this and it says I'm going to try and find it for you but if I can't find it which it doesn't seem to be able to you can add it so you go to add it says put a network address in for example 192.168.0.10 so you put that in thinking maybe that's it no that doesn't work so then when I look on the Zeus it says oh your wireless network is on 192.168.0.1 so okay I'll try that and that doesn't seem to work either so I haven't got very far and of course as is always a way I've got other things I've got to be doing it's Father's Day this weekend so we got granddads to visit um, Nanny of course isn't very well so we're going to go and visit Nanny anyway um, Hannah's looking after Izzy but obviously won't want Izzy all the time so so this might have to be a follow-up and I still haven't done one of the other things I want to do which is put a new connector on the aerial so um, so I haven't got very far typical there's never quite enough time in life is there anyway keep going okay so it's the next day and I have just plugged in just in case the cable that was with it wasn't any good the cable that sorry the, the cable that came with the boat wasn't any good I've just plugged in is my phone picking that up or has it all gone a bit there we go I've just plugged in the cable that came with the Wi-Fi one so it's a new cable I've just got I've got both ports in because I've just tried both different ports to see if I can find it obviously only one's plugged into can't pick it up plugged into the back of the chart plotter <coughs> and when I go to the oh, chart plotter now is that going to come out and I look at my Wi-Fi devices it finds it go free one uh, Wi-Fi one go free blah 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 it's the same name I've checked the name it says it's address 192.168.0.1 it's an access point so I'll go to my laptop oh, or tablet <coughs> and I go to a browser and I go to 192.168.0.1 and it finds it and it's got these settings on it operation mode it says it's a bridge settings yeah well loads of settings uh, well system log's got nothing in it statistics is whatever that is um, and that's fine so it looks like it's all good but if I go to my go free link You can't find it so I click add and I go to 192.168.0.1 
because that's the address that I can find it on everything else and click OK and it can't find it how annoying of course it's Sunday so I'm not going to be able to get hold of anyone OK I'm winning and as you could probably guess it's me being a bit silly really not reading instructions that screen that came up that said um, I can't connect try adding add it gave you a kind of um, an idea of where to go on your MFD which you have to know of course is I don't know multi-function device or something like that and what it's basically saying is have a look at your Zeus and what you do you have to go into net you don't go into wireless that would be too easy wouldn't it you go into network then you have to go down to the NMEA 0183 and then this comes up uh, and then you have to go into Ethernet it doesn't really tell you this that directly just indirectly because I suppose every device is different but anyway then it says the address of this thing is 192.168.0.197 so and this is going to be a first because I haven't clicked on it yet but I went to the ad and I typed in 192.168.0.197 uh, and now I've got a box that says Zeus 9 so I'm going to push it and we'll see what happens Okay, it's promising, waiting. Be a lot easier this without all the reflections on the screen, wouldn't it? Okay, it's hanging, so I'm guessing I have to do something now. Oh, yes, look, allow this thing to accept, and I'll say always. Okay. Hey, <coughs> that looks like my chart plotter. And there's the chart. And there's our boat sitting on the sitting on the river. Okay, doesn't zoom in very well. Okay. <laughs> Well, maybe I now have to set up how to make it zoom in and out, but we do at least seem to have something. Oh, pages up the top here. Ah, okay, right, so I can see other stuff. Um, instruments. It's good, isn't it? Okay. Ah, look, if you look at the top here, now I can see it, chart. It's hard to do this and film it at the same time. But anyway, there's a zoom in, zoom out. Ah, look, there we go. don't have to keep pressing it, you can just press and hold. Anyway, there we are, sitting on the river, on the mooring. Seems to work. A few buttons I've got to learn, but... Um, well, hey! Job done. Okay. So, as ever, well, as I say, that wasn't as easy as um, perhaps they make it out to be, but I guess I got there in the end. So, um... And it seems to work, it seems to respond quite quickly. Um, the Zeus itself is brilliant. Um, and this is responding to it quite quickly, so I imagine it'll be good. So, if you happen to have a B&G Zeus, um, and like ours, it, you can only kind of put it in one place. And ours is in the cockpit, which is great while we're sailing, but of course isn't so good the night before when you want to plan a route, or if you're sitting inside because it's miserable and you just want to know what the wind speed is, or you know all those other things. Now... Uh, we've got access to it all from inside the cabin, so um, it'll make it a lot easier just to to day-to-day you know, -to -day living with it. Um, I've now just got to tidy that up again. And then I'm going to move on to putting a new plug on the aerial, but that's a different story. So, if you've got a B&G, Zeus or System, 
or, or low rants or nabco or these other ones that are all basically the same now because if you can get different software for the same way wi-fi so i guess it's the same thing fits them all um have a go i think it's i think it's good we'll let you know how we get on with it or expect hannah will because she'll be the one using it most I expect when we're sailing or whatever but uh, anyway that's it